This video is not called how to study for an exam and that's for a reason. It's because I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be a perfect student and tell you uh, I guess the ideal way to study for an exam because I think you kind of know that that involves not cramming and spending plenty of time to do things properly. Uh, in reality this video is going to be what studying for an exam more often than not looked like for me and often that was not under an ideal situation I was often stressed cramming trying to memorize a lot of stuff and I'm just going to show you what that looked like and how to make the best of that situation if you find yourself there I kind of wanted to make this video as well um, stemming from a conversation I had with a friend who studied law and thinking about how studying for exams was different between us for me it seemed like a lot of doing practice problems and memorizing equations and for her it seemed more about reading large passages of text. So I'm just going to show you uh, what it would look like if I was studying for an astrophysics exam and for the point of illustration I'm going to be pretending to study for an MIT astronomy exam similar to the one I've shown on my channel before and that's based off this course on MIT open courseware called Introduction to Astronomy. The reason I've chosen this is because the materials that I'm going to have here today are all publicly available so that includes some lecture notes, some practice exams and then an exam itself. So assuming I had access to all of this material uh, at my own university and I had an exam coming up uh, very imminently this is what I would do. To start with I would want to have a look over any lecture notes. Now depending on how soon the exam is depends on how much depth I want to go into here. I definitely don't want to get bogged down by reading all the notes available and trying to deeply understand all of them because that could be a very time consuming task with not necessarily that much payoff. At the bare minimum, if the lecturer has provided any nicely typed up neat notes on say the internet uh, online, I would want to print those out, go through them and maybe like highlight any essential things. Um, so whether that's some essential formulas or a few sentences that I think are like really crucial and then as I'm doing that if I can gain access to like a formula sheet or something I'll keep that with me and I'll transcribe any of these important formulas that I find in the lecture notes uh, onto this piece of paper just so that I can keep track of all the important things. I'd only write down the bare essentials that I think I'm going to need to know for the exam and if this had have been a formula sheet and not just a sheet of constants then if this formula was already on here I wouldn't have to write it down again. Now this would probably be the minimum. I to be honest wasn't much of a fan of taking my own notes in lectures uh, in particularly much detail because I never found the notes that I took to be very useful compared to uh, whether it was like textbook notes or notes that the lecturer would just provide online themselves or other relevant information about the topic and I find it would often be a waste of time for me to spend too long taking my own notes so you know these notes here are just good to get us kind of in the feel for what was going on, jog our memory of what we actually learned in this course uh, and have it all fresh there in our mind. While I'm doing that and finding all of my favorite things from the lecture notes I'll also be keeping a running tally of questions that come up, questions that I need to ask someone about or that I just know I need to come back to. So I'll keep this sort of list of things that I read about that I just don't understand what they do. Some of these questions will turn out to have simple answers, I just need to look them up and then I can cross them off or I'll ask a friend and they'll explain how to do it. Some of these questions I won't get answers to even on my way into the exam and that's okay, at least I have some awareness of what I don't know and probably by that point I've written off the rest of the questions as being not worth knowing for the exam. I'd not want to spend any more than like a quarter to a half of my study time looking through notes and reading stuff like this because it's a very passive activity. What I'd want to spend most of my time on, uh, my precious time before the exam, is actually doing some more active learning and so that is going to be comp of looking through 
uh, solutions to past exams, quizzes and assignments, and also doing the questions myself. So if I am really just getting started and I need a bit of help, what I would do is print off any solutions to anything I can find on the internet that the lecturer has provided that I think are relevant. So if the lecturer has provided solutions to a past exam or quiz, then that is great uh, and that's going to be a great starting point. I know that often the advice is to never just read the solutions uh, to a problem. But to be honest, this is not how to be a perfect student. This is how I would study for an exam. And I would always want to have a look at the solutions before I got started trying to solve them on my own because this would so save me a lot of time from just doing the wrong methods and just going about things in completely the wrong way. So I'd print off any of these I can find and literally just read through them. I'd read the question, I'd have a bit of a think about it, and I'd read through the answer, making sure that I knew exactly where every line was coming from and that I knew what was going on here. By the end of reading through this page, I'd be like, yeah, sure, I think I know how to do problems of this type. And I do that sort of throughout here. And what you generally find is the more solutions to these things you read, you see the patterns coming up and you're like, OK, I know the most efficient way to do this. And it gets easier and easier. You definitely don't want to only read other people's solutions. I'm saying this makes a great start if you're kind of lost and just don't know the methods. But once you've finished reading uh, as many answers as you can find or that you need to start feeling comfortable then it's time to try a practice exam for yourself so this could even be one that you know you have solutions for but you don't want to look at the solutions yet you want to just try and go through on your own you might recognize some of the problems from things you've already just been looking at and that's just going to make this process a bit faster once I've tried out the exam, I'm going to want to go through and mark it. Um, so this helps if the solutions are available and if they're not, it means I might have to ask my friends, compare answers there, uh, or maybe even ask the lecturer to try and see if what I'm doing is actually right. Working through your own practice problems is what I think you should spend the most time doing because it's definitely the most effective way uh, to know what you do and don't know and to know that you can actually put into practice. I find that just reading through the lecture notes and understanding them, like sure you could have an amazing understanding of what's said in lectures, that's not necessarily going to help you answer these questions. You need to have practiced actually doing the process. And like I said, the more questions like this that you work through, uh, the more patterns you're going to find and the easier it's going to get. By the time you've gone through a few practice exams, uh, the questions might be so familiar that you don't need to actually work through each of them. You can be like, oh yeah, that's just similar to that one I've seen before. And you can be confident you know how to do that type of question. By this point, I will have acquired quite a large stack of paper that consists of some of the notes, some of the things I think are important, some of the practice exams that either I've filled out my own solutions for or that I've found solutions for through somewhere else. This is going to become kind of gold for me to keep everything fresh in my mind. If I'm starting to feel anxious and losing confidence that I don't remember how to do a particular topic or kind of question I'll look through to find the um, example I did and then be like oh yeah yeah I remember how to do that now and I'll probably carry this around with me uh, even until I go to the exam and I am the kind of person that's like an hour before the exam or even much closer I'm like still reading this um, is that ideal no some people say you shouldn't be stressing yourself out like right before an exam but also right before an exam is some of the most precious time to learn information that you're going to remember in like an hour or half an hour so it's really up to you i'm not saying this is the perfect way to study but this is just what it would look like for me this is also the type of course it's like a first year course so a lot of the questions are formula based or you actually can quite easily find A, practice examples and solutions, and B, you can actually identify patterns between them because there's lots of sort of small questions. As you get further into uni, like by the time you get to like fourth year or something, this method might be a little bit more difficult because the questions are each more involved and 
maybe there is no right way to solve each of them. It comes down to being this strange skill of looking at mathematics and equations and sort of being able to read them and understand them rather than reading large passages of text. Uh, I guess it's practicing the art of reading the minimum information to understand what's going on. Trying to look down through several steps of working and be like, okay, I know what's happening here and I understand the ideas that are being used here uh, is going to be really useful for you. And I'm definitely not obsessing over the small details in the lecture notes that might not be worth it in the end. Sure, if you have plenty of time, try and understand everything, but sometimes you have to be prepared to let go of some details uh, to make the best use of the time that you have left. I'm hoping to upload a sort of special study motivation video after this one, which will be 25 minutes of me actually slowly working through this exam and doing those practice problems like I sort of showed you, with the idea being that you could play that video while you're doing your own study for a bit of motivation that someone else is also focusing on something. Uh, maybe that will help you focus too. So keep an eye out for that and thank you for watching. Also, good luck for any exams that you're studying for.